Hello, I'm Sunita Narayan, and I work at the Center for Science and Environment. Um, I work with my colleague, An Anumita Roy Chaudhary, who heads CSE's program on air pollution. And today, both of us are here to talk about the crisis of air pollution in our city. Winter is here. We are already choking. We can see the pollution levels rising. But what we want to talk about today is what have been the hits and the misses as far as Delhi is concerned? What have we done to fight air pollution? And what do we still need to do? And that's something we need to understand because it's not enough to have outrage against pollution. We must be outraged. We must be angry because it affects our health. It affects the health of our children. But we must also demand action. And we must also recognize when action is happening. Because if we don't recognize that, we will also not have the ability to be able to really fight this fight. So I would like Anumita to tell us about what is data showing us in terms of the levels of pollution in the city. Sunita, it's a fascinating analysis that we have just done. And the purpose of this entire analysis has been that now it's almost a decade. Since 2010, now we are 2019. Next year, we hit the next decade, right? So during this decade, what has happened in Delhi? And where are we today? And therefore, where we need to go? So we did a very granular analysis of air quality data from Central Pollution Control Board for this 10 long years. And this shows and brings out a fascinating picture. It's showing us that since the beginning of the decade until now, we have bent the pollution curve. The overall particulate pollution is down by 25%. Now, I know the moment we said it, okay, there was also an outrage in the city that why? I mean, recognizing improvement is even harder, it seems, right? But clearly match that with the action on ground. Okay, since 2010, can you believe it, the kind of clean fuel transition that we have seen in this city, first of all, three power plants have been shut, equaling 1,245 megawatt size of power plant, right, generation capacity. In addition to that, now we know the dirty fuels, pet coke, furnace oil, coal, these are all banned. And as a result of that, a massive transition to natural gas has happened, not only in transport sector, but even in industrial sector which is even more important. BS6 fuel has already arrived. BS4 transition is now more scaled up in the city. And in addition to that, we know the big action that has been taken on trucks. Today, the truck numbers have come down because of the bypass roads created, because of the environment pollution charge on them, ban on entry on 10-year-old 10, 10 trucks, and also the cashless payment that RFID has enabled. So, and at the same time, we know that DG set usage mm. in the city has also reduced considerably. Now, aren't these all supposed to add up and contribute to the trend? So, which has happened, so we should recognize, but understand that even achieving that has been so tough. And looking forward, today our analysis is showing, even after this 25% cut, Delhi still has to reduce pollution by yet another 65% to meet clean air standards. Now just imagine how much more disruptive and how much more hard, difficult decisions we'll have to take. Now, I want to discuss the issue that is burning today in Delhi. Is Delhi's winter pollution because of its local sources or is it coming from straw burning from Punjab and Haryana? Now, let's, let's take the politics out of this. Let us just understand what does the science of air pollution tell us? One big question in the mind of everybody who is in Delhi is, why is it that in winter, pollution suddenly goes up? 15th of October, we start choking. Is it because new sources of pollution have come, which is because of straw burning from Punjab? Or is it something else? Let's understand this very clearly, that the fact is we are in Delhi and in the north area of uh, India. The, the weather conditions are very adverse for pollution. So 
it is not that there are new sources of pollution. The fact is the same sources existed even a month ago when you and I were breathing clean air and we were breathing well and looking at the blue skies and saying, wow, clean air in Delhi. But the same sources existed. The sources of pollution remain the same. What changes is the weather. Now what has happened is, unlike a month ago, there is no wind. The dispersion amount uh, that exists in the atmosphere, which is the columns in the atmosphere which would allow pollutants to disperse, just don't exist anymore. The cold air is settling. Cold is now coming into Delhi. No wind, no dispersion, cold. That makes those same sources of pollution choke us. So the local sources of pollution are the key reasons why Delhi and its surrounding areas are seeing poor or very poor pollution levels. Now this does not mean that Punjab and Haryana, the farmers of Punjab and Haryana do not contribute. The fact is what Safar, which is India's premier scientific research organization, its wind modeling studies tell us that the biomass burning that happens because of the farmers of Punjab and Haryana contribute any day right now between 5 and even 10 percent of the pollution that we are seeing. On when the wind comes from Punjab and Haryana, it could even be that that contribution could go up. But the fact is today it is 5 to 10 percent and it is local sources of pollution. Everything from garbage burning, lack of dust management, uh, factories which are using coal and therefore having stack pollution, everything which is making this city um, air quality foul. It is also because there are such large numbers of vehicles on the road which continue to contribute even though we have cleaner fuel. So that's what we need to address. But that's why there is also today GRAP. Anumita will explain that to us. And clearly for the reasons that you've explained, Greater Response Action Plan has, as you know, has come into force from October 15th onwards. And that is the emergency plan which is demanding all the cities in the national capital region to act. And they have very clearly laid out the action that will have to be implemented now, focusing on that how do you therefore control and the enforce emissions from brickens and small-scale industrial um, uh, cent the sectors, the units that exist, open burning, uh, that how do we control that? And at the same time, how to ensure enforcement. So there is a list of emergency action. But I think the what is going to be the defining parameter this year is enforcement, enforcement, and enforcement. And But what is important about the graph this year is also that this is not too much Delhi-centric anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's taking a very NCR-wide view and uh, demanding even NCR to take very stringent measure. And at the same time, yet another new approach of the graph this year is the hotspot approach, right? And clearly what the analysis is showing and the both Central Pollution Control Board and the State Pollution Control Boards of NCR, they have identified about 14 hotspots in Delhi and NCR region. And these hotspots, some of our analysis is showing that the pollution levels in these areas are even higher than the city's average. And the city's average, which is already so bad compared to the standard. Now, these are all about local pollution. And these areas have very high pollution, mainly because of the waste uh, burning that is happening, both uh, municipal solid waste and the industrial uh, waste, which is a very critical problem. And, and I think, and EPCA here has taken a very important uh, lead and it's, uh, and it's very important strategy that has been adopted now. Maybe you can reflect a little bit on the hotspot management that we are looking for. No, definitely, Anumita. And also, I mean, let me explain what EPCA will try and do this uh, winter. I think, and what we are now learning, remember what Anumita has told us, and I think that really worries me and concerns me. The fact is, we have 65% reduction still to go. And we must recognize one thing, that all the easy answers are over. 
we've closed down our power plants we've even shut down coal use in delhi we have made the transition to bs6 fuel so the question is what do we do to get that remaining 65% reduction what do we do to make sure that when the weather turns adverse as it has today the same local sources that existed a month ago don't choke us that is really the question on the table now if we want our right to clean air secured so two key things that will need to be done one that as anumita has talked about we have a, we have now discussed with the state pollution control boards the need to have local action plan for each identified pollution hotspot when these action plans are developed they need to be enforceable and implementable so we have asked for action plans which will tell us what will you do to ensure that there is no waste burning what will you do to make sure that the dust uh, from construction road building is kept under check what will you do to make sure that factory pollution is uh, is controlled those are turning out to be the three major sources of pollution which are in the local areas today so we are hoping and that's really the achilles heel and i have to tell you and i know anumita will agree with me this is where our toughest battle is because the capacity to actually monitor on the ground actually take action on the ground enforce action and the need for deterrence today the pollution control boards are finding road any owning agencies they're finding big builders people are paying the fines but they're continuing to do what they do or they just take the uh, agency to court no fines are paid winter pollution continues so this is going to be one of our toughest agendas going forward the other big issue obviously to get the 65% is going to be the mobility transition and the third big issue is going to be to get the fuel transition but i think that's where let's have another episode episode 2 when we will take you through what do we do next but for the moment please be safe please ensure that you are part of the fight against air pollution by making sure that you can do your bit what you can do today is to make sure that all local sources of pollution are controlled you can be part of this battle by making sure that you demand from your government from our government more ways in which we can reduce cars on the road we need public transport just talking about odd and even bringing it now and then is not going to be the answer till we have public transport those are things we need you to be part of but this winter anumita and i will keep this conversation going so that we can keep bringing to you what we see as the changes and what we want you your help to act absolutely and the only one line that i'm going to add that we have seen awareness growing as far as problem is concerned now is the time to build awareness understanding and support for difficult decisions so understand the solution thank you very much